Batteries. Consider this a reminder to keep your phone charged. Let's start at the beginning with the ancient Parthians who lived in what is now modern day Iran around 250 BC. The Parthians are credited with inventing the first battery known as the Baghdad battery or the Parthian battery. The Baghdad battery is an artifact that has puzzled historians for years. It was discovered in the 1930s by a team of archaeologists who were excavating the ruins of the ancient city of Kujit Rabu in what is now Iraq. The battery consists of a clay jar that is approximately 5 inches tall and 3 inches in diameter with a narrow neck and a flat perforated lid. Inside the jar is a copper cylinder that is approximately 4 inches tall and 2 inches in diameter and an iron rod that is approximately 3 inches tall and a quarter inch in diameter. The Baghdad battery was initially thought to be a simple container for holding scrolls or other small objects, but further analysis revealed that it was capable of producing an electric charge. The battery works by filling the jar with an acidic liquid such as vinegar or lemon juice and then inserting the copper cylinder in the iron rod. When the copper and iron are connected by a wire or other conductor, a small electric current is produced. The purpose of the Baghdad battery is not entirely clear, but it is believed to have been used for electroplating or other small scale applications. Some experts have suggested that the battery may have been used for medical purposes such as treating pain or other ailments, but there is little evidence to support this theory. The discovery of the Baghdad battery has raised many questions about the ancient world and its technological capabilities. Some historians believe that the ancient Parthians may have had a much more advanced understanding of electricity than previously thought. However, there is little direct evidence to support this theory and many experts believe that the Baghdad battery was simply a one-off invention that did not have a significant impact on the development of technology. So was it really a battery? Likely it was, but of course no one can really confirm that. Now let's fast forward to the 18th century, when scientists and inventors started to experiment with electricity and batteries in earnest. The Leyden jar is an early form of capacitor that was invented in 1745 by a Dutch physicist named Peter van Moschenbroek and his student Andreas Kunius in the city of Leiden in the Netherlands. The Leyden jar consists of a glass jar that is partially filled with water or other liquid, with a metal rod or wire running down the center of the jar, and a metal foil lining the outside of the jar. The metal rod is connected to a source of electricity such as an electrostatic generator and the foil is connected to the ground. When the electrostatic generator is activated, it produces an electric charge that is stored in the Leyden jar. The Leyden jar was an important breakthrough in the study of electricity as it allowed scientists to store and manipulate electric charges in a controlled manner. The device was used by many prominent scientists of the time including Benjamin Franklin who used it in his famous experiments with lightning. The Leyden jar also played a crucial role in the development of the modern battery, as it demonstrated the principle of storing electric charge in a capacitor. The Leyden jar was eventually replaced by more efficient and practical capacitors, but it remains an important landmark in the history of electrical engineering. Today, the Leyden jar is often used as a teaching tool in physics classrooms to demonstrate the principles of electric charge and capacitors. It's a simple design and has historical significance that make it an enduring symbol of the early days of electricity and scientific revolution. The first true battery was invented in 1800 by Alessandro Volta, an Italian physicist. Volta's batteries consisted of alternating disks of copper and zinc separated by pieces of cardboard soaked in salt water. The copper and zinc acted as electrodes and the salt water acted as an electrolyte allowing the flow of electrons between the electrodes. Volta's battery was the first to produce a steady continuous flow of electricity and it paved the way for many more advances in the field of electricity. In the years that followed, many other inventors and scientists contributed to the development of batteries. In 1836, John Frederick Daniel invented the Daniel cell, which used copper and zinc electrodes and a copper sulfite electrolyte to produce a more stable and reliable flow of electricity. In 1866, Georges Leclanc invented the Leclanc cell, which used a carbon electrode, a zinc electrode, and a solution of ammonium chloride as the electrolyte. The Leclanc cell was widely used in early telegraph systems and other applications. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the development of portable batteries revolutionized many aspects of daily life. In 1866, the French engineer Georges Trouvet invented the first rechargeable battery, which used lead acid electrodes and a sulfuric acid electrolyte. The lead acid battery was widely used in early automobiles and other applications, and it remains in use today in many types of vehicles. In the early 20th century, several other types of batteries were invented, including the dry cell and the alkaline battery. The dry cell, which was invented by Carl Gassner in 1887, used a paste of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride as the electrolyte, instead of a liquid. 
the dry cell was much more portable and less prone to leaking than earlier batteries, and it became widely used in flashlights, radios, and other devices. The alkaline battery, which was invented by Lewis Urey in 1954, used an alkaline electrolyte, which allowed it to produce more power and last longer than earlier batteries. In the decades since, batteries have continued to evolve and improve, with new types of batteries being developed for a wide range of applications. Lithium-ion batteries, which were first developed in the 1980s, have revolutionized the portable electronics industry, allowing for longer battery life and faster charging times. Nickel-metal hybrid batteries, which were developed in the 1980s, are also widely used in portable electronics as well as in hybrid vehicles. In recent years, there has been a surge of interest in developing new types of batteries that are more environmentally friendly and sustainable. One promising technology is the solid-state battery, which uses a solid electrolyte instead of a liquid or gel electrolyte. Solid-state batteries have the potential to offer higher energy density, longer life cycle, and improved safety over conventional batteries. Another promising technology is the flow battery, which uses two tanks of electrolyte that flow through a cell to generate electricity. Flow batteries have the potential to be scaled up to provide large amounts of energy storage for renewable energy systems such as wind and solar power. Clearly, batteries have played a crucial role in enabling many of the technological advancements of the past two centuries, and they continue to evolve and improve, offering new possibilities for energy storage and sustainability. All right, you guys, that is the history of batteries. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it uh, informative and interesting. Um, of course, if you did like it, be sure to leave a like down below. That would really help me out. Uh, if you have an idea on what you want me to make a video next, leave a comment down below. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more history. Bye now.